What's up, my little dumpy babies? You smell that? You smell that? You smell the dump truck pulling in? Huh? Be you. Huh? Can you smell it? Well, I smell it, and it smells like the future. Welcome to the voicemail dump truck, my friends. It's August 4th, 2022. This version of the dump truck comes with two very special guests joining the dump party. Jeremy Hammond, how are you, sir? Please call me Knuckles the Hedgehog. Oh, uh, my bad. I did ask you before we started. (laughs) That's right. That is my fault. Please allow we uh, me to... We can restart if you want. We can restart <laughs> this again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, nope. yeah, it'll no. definitely be the first time we've restarted. Yep, yeah. exactly. <laughs> uh, a, a nice jam. <laughs> Another little stinky baby, uh, Mr. Quarcinio Hall. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. I uh, I, I do love that, uh, folks. If you ask Jeff Bacalar to call you something, he will do it. Oh yeah. You can change I your name to whatever you want. I Whatever don't know any want. better. I can't help myself. This is who I am. <laughs> and of course, always riding shotgun uh, in the, the voicemail dump truck. He never wears his seatbelt. I'm sorry. He doesn't. He does that thing where he tucks it behind him and clicks it so that the buzzer won't go off. Dan Riker. I, I took apart a seatbelt just like four hours ago for the first time. I had to find a special screwdriver and take apart a seatbelt. It's crazy. What do you mean seat belt. apart a seatbelt? Yeah, what the I, fuck are so you talking I went to about? go to UPS because I bought a copy of Contra Hardcore for the Genesis, and so I had to go to UPS to pick it up. And I got in the, the car, and um, I got shorts on. I'm wearing them right now. And then mm. I went to go buckle the seatbelt and it stopped and it's because a little rope on my shorts got stuck in the seatbelt and then I yanked it out but it left the part of my shorts rope in the seatbelt and then it wouldn't buckle anymore and I was like well this is a whole problem and so I had to find out how to fucking take apart a seatbelt and it's like 120 degrees in the garage and it was just a, it was a hole to do but we, we got it out of there it was very exciting for everyone and that's oh the God. kind of compelling Riveted. shit you're going to hear <laughs> on the voicemail dump truck ladies and give gentlemen give me a fun name give me a fun name they got fun names yeah, no, uh, Jeff, I'm can bro. you please uh, c- can you please refer to Dan as David Pasta Wallace? Oh, Mr. Pasta Wallace, thank you for joining the <laughs> yes, program. Yes, uh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, happy to be here. Did you pick up what you needed from the UPS store, Mr. Pasta Wallace? Yeah, I got a copy of Contra Hardcore in my room now. That's cool. I don't UPS know delivers to my house. I don't know why you had to go get it yourself from the store. I That's got weird. a mailbox. You got to use it. Is Contra one of the, uh, one of the Contra games? It's a, the Genesis one. It's the best Contra game. Yeah, but people Ooh. don't talk about it enough. I thought I thought it was going to be like porn for guys that just look like Stallone and Schwarzenegger. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of what Contra is, yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of Stallone, and, and spe- speaking of the Genesis, uh, this might be the only space I'll ever get to talk about this. And the Demolition Man game for the Sega Genesis. Ah, oh, there we yeah. go. One of one of Jeremy, the please. This is Contra not a Rick web. Box. This is absolutely not the place to talk about video games. Sorry, sorry. Actually, it's true. The dump oh, truck isn't hedgehog. bad. So uh, we're going to no longer have to call you Knuckles, please. Just Jeremy, business as usual. Um, I'm glad to be back. This is my first dump truck in in a lot of weeks. Um, You know, I was sick for a while. Don't get sick. I highly recommend not getting sick. And uh, it's just good to be back. I'm just glad to be dumping again. And uh, it's a lot of fun. I um, stop you from dumping? Don't take sick days, take sick dumps. You know, I wish I was taking sick dumps. I I had a I I'm not gonna lie, I was fucked up. Like I was yeah. really fucked up for like five days. I talked to you on the phone and you, you sounded fucked up. Oh, yes. that's right. You did call me on the phone. Did you forget that? Jeez, you did seem out of it. I was <laughs> okay, this was like day two of my uh COVID and fucking Dan called like he's he's like you were like frantically texting me or some shit. Oh my god, it's all coming rushing back right now, you son of you a bitch. Forgot all this? <laughs> what I forgot all of it. I was literally like on you know, I could not get off the couch, could not get out of the, the goddamn bed, and you were just like, Hey man, there's something I, I really want to talk to you about. Or it'd, it'd be really cool if you could pick up your phone or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you it son of a business. bitch we had to talk business yeah it was business anyway um you know look i just want to say like uh if you don't feel well and you still decide to go to a party right you're a fucking huge piece of shit you and are, you should yeah. go to jail like that's We're- that's that's what i'm trying to say yeah it's it's to the point now where it just seems like everybody gets covid every couple of months now i mean this was my first time and it's your it first- was 
It was my first time. It was it was it was bad. It was, it was rough. Yeah. It was real rough. I was not happy at all. Yeah. And uh, I just I I thought now look like I realize people who don't have the luxury of like you know not going to work that their work is you know tyrannical where they can't take sick days and all that shit is terrible and and whatever it is like I get it but if you are going somewhere and you don't feel well and it's like a party or something like that fuck's wrong with you I mean that that, that stood to reason before that was always the case that was always the case especially like hey what the fuck are you doing. Yeah. Well, there's, I mean, in the music industry, I feel like in the performing industry, it's like the show must go on kind of mentality is, uh, is like complicated. I, I like, I feel like a lot of performers are still trying to figure out what do we do? Like, totally. where's the lot? Like, uh, cause it, you know, it's hard to work, like get that out of your system after a while. I'm, uh, I, I'm like, uh, you know, I'm a germaphobe in general, so we're in my, this is my worst nightmare, <laughs> but, um, you know, I, uh, I'm just, I, I don't know. Yeah. You're, uh, Look, I, you're... I, I think people like feel who feel sick and they go to a thing. It's like, yeah, it's, it's a mess. I mean, yeah, you know I'm talking about the parties. I'm talking about like socializing voluntarily. Guess what? You're going to have to miss the fucking cupcakes. Okay. You're not, you're just not going to be able to have some cake. Okay. Yeah. You just have to take that L and fucking get better. Okay. Anyway, this doesn't have to be one of those kinds of shows. What it <laughs> does have to be is a call in voicemail program. Ladies oh! and gentlemen, we've got, I don't know. What am I looking at? A little bit over a dozen finely picked voicemails straight to, these are farm to table voicemails. A lot over a dozen. What is that? Those those are, I, I would That's guess almost more like, two dozen, I would say. I, yeah, I was going to say two dozen. I bought cool. two dozen. Well, two. it's another thing I can't do anymore post COVID uh, is count. <laughs> um, it's brain fog. It's brain fog. <laughs> Leave them alone. There's 22 uh, here. And you say 22? 22 is a little over a dozen? Wait, wait, how much is a dozen? No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's go around the room, starting with Jeremy. Jeremy, please pick the first voicemail for us, please. Wow, what an honor! Uh, mm -hmm. I I feel like I'm I'm being pimped here, but I will simply have to choose Goku.mp3. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, of on course. brand. Of course, of course. Hey, jumpers! I've been watching a lot of Dragon Ball. What's your favorite Goku form? Love you. Ooh, ooh. I think there's you only one Goku person that can answer this. Maybe Dan, too. I don't know. I mean, I just I saw one. the Dragon Ball Z run, so all I really know is, like, standard... Well, there's Kid Goku, there's Adult <laughs> Goku, and then Super yes. Saiyan. I know when you get outside of that, there's, like, Super Duper Saiyan level 14 or something. But You're like, absolutely uh, right. That's what it's called, yeah. So, okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Super so, Duper all Saiyan, what I know Super Saiyan Volume 3, Volume 4. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go Super, Super Saiyan. Reality. Super Duper Saiyan Alt... There's yeah. there's Goku Master of Reality. There's all sorts of <laughs> yeah. There's there's uh there's Super Saiyan. You pressed triangle. <laughs> <laughs> so the color palette is totally swapped. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say my favorite my favorite Goku, of course, is Super Saiyan three Goku, where they take away his eyebrows to add more hair to his head. I think that's a very funny move. <laughs> they like at some point they they came up with the idea of changing his hair color or just his hair generally. They never really came up with another idea after that, so forever in the franchise, the way that you signify more power is more hair or different hair. And, Couldn't uh, he have more arms form. or bigger biceps or something? Like, there's got to be yeah, something. Yeah, that's the thing. No, because you draw, like, they did do that once, and then everybody was like, no, no, this is stupid. And they had to really actually be like, we were just kidding about that. Can't <laughs> that's be actually not Dragon what Ball. it looks like when they get more powerful. <laughs> Stupid's not allowed in the Dragon Ball universe. Vegeta, oh, it's Vegeta who got like when he was a Super Saiyan, like he got really buff, and people were like, mm -hmm. "No, thank you." <laughs> yeah, him and his son, yeah, they both like went and worked out for a really long time, and they came out looking like like uh, uh, like the mountain in uh, Game of Thrones. What did, and, what did uh, you just Google to to make that comment, Guarcinio? What 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 did you just pull up and I've find out friends... some like Vegeta cheat cheat here? Like, what's going on? <laughs> I have been writing nonsense with knuckles the hedgehog for going on seven years now or some shit <laughs> once once a thing not even an episode whether it's a segment or a bit there is a 
Dragon Ball, like, it, it, like Jeremy is like, can I put a Dragon Ball bit in here? Can we force this in? I actually don't it. think we ever managed to get any, any into the original two. No, you absolutely. Absolutely we did. Uh, like, uh, I remember um, Emily did a whole thing about, like, the Patara earrings. You're right, yes. There was a reference. To the oh, wow. Earrings. You Okay, you can know a lot more than I do about that whole shit. Okay, fair Speaking enough. Speaking of the Patara earrings, my favorite Goku form is Vegito. I don't know if that counts, but he's a, he's a part of it, and it, it is a form. Is that when they counts. merge? They fusion is, dance? Yes. It put the little rings on, and it's yeah. my favorite because I like the palette swap and the little gloves. And the earrings look great. <laughs> it's little gloves. <laughs> Nobody explains where they come from. I just Vegito like is not a small child, right? Vegito is an adult because there's like a Gotenks is the, the small is the fusion, the child, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they do a dance and they fuse, but the That's adults right. uh, don't dance. Do, That's for do a little bit. That's for they, they put on they, special they, earrings. They put on <laughs> special <laughs> earrings, and essentially, it's Goku doing drag, and uh, I like it. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, okay. he does kind of, especially when he gets the blue hair in the later ones, he kind of does have like a bit of like a Liza Minnelli sort of a look to it. <laughs> I lo I'm about to watch Cabaret for the first time. No. I'm just... Really? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy it. I want to watch Liza sing songs. What are you saying, Jeff? No, I'm saying I, I can't <laughs> I'm believe... enjoying myself. No, I was actually going to say uh, I'm surprised you made it this far in your life without having seen it. So hmm. I, I, know I hear it. Is. I've, oh, I, I've gotten I've spent too much time watching Dragon Ball apparently to enjoy high level Bob Fosse musicals. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, what about you, Dan? What's your favorite uh, Goku? For? What's your favorite Goku? I'm just gonna say Super Goku? Saiyan because I, I, that's yeah. the one I feel like I've seen the most. Because like normal Goku is just a dork and a bad father, and then Super Saiyan seems at least a little cooler than that. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, thank you, caller. He cuts an alien in half. I remember seeing that. That is true. Yeah. It took a long time to do that. It took me a while <laughs> to, to, to watch my first anime. It's obviously not uh, Goku, but I um, I finally can... Uh, nothing I hear is, is weird anymore, you know, where I'm just like, yeah, I, I get it. Like, what are you watching? Is supposed to be I'm, watching, weird? I'm watching JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Um, oh, yeah, that is some weird shit. And I also watched the first season of One Punch Man for, for a Ooh, podcast also review. Pretty weird, yeah. And uh, now I'm like in the club now where it's just like, yeah, I get it. Ye, we all well, watching One Punch Man without watching any other shonen is a very funny like way to approach anime because it is very much like a parody and, and a commentary on a specific type of anime. And only watching that is is very, it's like only watching Hot Shots, you know? Yeah, <laughs> like, oh, okay. like, like watching Rambo. MacGruber without ever seeing an Arnold movie or something? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, well, yeah. yeah I mean, I, I've gotten some of that through the other hosts on the show where they've sort of like, you know, curated the experience for me and, and clued me in on things that might be over my head. But yeah, I didn't realize I was that fucked up. To have done <laughs> I that. am, I am, uh, I'm so not uh, an anime person. I like want to be because I think the drawings look really cool. Yeah, but I feel like everyone I've I, I've like any any moment, any time in my life where I was like, I think I might want to give anime a shot. Someone has like been like, you need to watch my favorite anime, which doesn't necessarily mean that that's the be that's the way to get into anime uh, yeah. initially. And so, like, I rem I think someone, uh, like, right before college, I mentioned that I was like, I think I, think I might want to get into anime. This seems like there's some, like, really incredible art and uh, animation going on here. And then someone told me to watch Speed Grapher. And I was like... Too much. I don't know what the. I don't know what that is. A guy is, yeah. who can kill somebody with by taking a picture. I don't. I no. have no. He can blow it up by look. Absolutely I not. Could not under. I. It. There was just a lot of shit going on. I don't know. Anime is a format that is just. It's not it's for me, folks. Stuff. Yeah. I don't watch it uncompensated anymore. Is the thing. I only. <laughs> <laughs> I only it watch be. it for podcasts. Uh, yeah. There we go. I, but, Jojo's uh, was always like the onboarding one people you know so doing it for the site that it makes the most sense I guess uh, I, I understand where you come from but, I don't uh, count course, uh, studio Ghibli stuff that doesn't count Those yeah I don't, th I don't think that yeah I don't think that counts um, 
Gorsinio, it is your turn. Please make a selection. All right. Well, uh, there's a lot of stuff that seems like it's picked for me, but I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna not choose that shit. I'm gonna. We're gonna listen to Shrek Two. <laughs> okay. Well done. What up, my dumpalicious gang? Jason from Los Angeles here, and I have a question for y'all. Is there a piece of media, for example, a song that you only know because of its presence in another piece of media? The example I'll give is that my fiance only knows about David Bowie because of Shrek Two. Not oh changes in that movie. Anyway, let's do it with y'all. Love the show. Keep up the awesome work. Bye. That's truly cursed. That's cursed. Fucking, that love fucking that. rules. That's so That's funny. So funny. Um, I want to say that I know people who had no idea about um Steely Dan until they saw Oh Hello on Broadway. <laughs> Oh wow, <laughs> which wow. I thought was pretty yeah. funny, um, I, but I but, then, but understandable. I think understandable for like thirty somethings. Steely Dan's awesome though. I I mean, look, I'm not a huge Steely Dan fan. I think I think Oh Hello like did a lot for that band. <laughs> In a weird Steely way. Dan is. I I made a playlist of. I was trying to think. I was going to the dentist to get a bunch of crowns done, and I was trying to think what is a playlist that would be perfect for while I'm on nitrous and just trying to avoid dental drills and i just made an all steely dan playlist and then i had like a bunch of fillings and grounds had to be done so i just listened to steely dan exclusively in the dentist oh that's that's like how you ruin steely dan for yourself though i feel like that's the thing like dirty work came on the radio not too long ago and i was just thinking about what the drill felt like and oh no that's terrible it kind of ruined steely dan for me there was a there was a a dirty work was in a sopranos episode and i feel like that was a big that's that's such a um, huge that was a huge pop for them yeah that was definitely the first time i heard steely dan you know what or like or like salt salt them out after that yeah i didn't even know that was steely dan oh wow wow i like i i have only one song by steely dan that i could say confidently and for sure is a steely dan song which is uh, Kid Charlemagne. And I only know that song because it was my first favorite song in my life. That is the first song I ever listened to that I cognizantly remember putting on. (laughs) Interesting. Yeah, I I need nothing else from this artist. I'm good. I'll just take I, I literally, I would yeah. put on the, we had the record at my mom's house and we'd put it on and we would listen to the first song and I'd be like, all right, I'm done. Take it off. (laughs) Wow. Mine is actually is like the reverse of it, where I only knew about Top Gun because of (laughs) Highway to the Danger Zone, Mm. but I never actually saw the movie until maybe a month ago. The first Top Gun, yeah? The first Top Gun. I saw it before watching the new Top Gun, uh, because everyone was like, you gotta go see it. And I was like, I'll watch a plane. (laughs) <laughs> uh, but yeah, forever I would make reference to, uh, like I think maybe I started to watch Top Gun when I was in like high school and I fell asleep or whatever, and uh, then we needed uh, we had to reference Top Gun in uh, a two minutes episode because we covered uh, Take My Breath Away. <laughs> um, but yeah, I only I th- I feel like that's an entire movie that I felt like I experienced. At least to me, it felt like I had experienced the entire thing just because of Highway to the Danger Zone. Yeah. I I mean, you talk about a piece of media that straight up owns a song, right? Like, that is that. It's probably, um, you know, Kenny Loggins and Caddyshack also, where it's just like they are Mm. inseparable. Highway to the Danger Zone is in that, too. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Highway to the Danger Zone. I feel like Highway to the Danger Zone is is one of the few things where like the song is completely associated with the movie, but the song is more well known than the actual like piece of pieces of the movies. Like I think it's Highway to the Danger Zone, the volleyball scene. There's a guy named Goose, and then that's it's out of the zeitgeist. Are the oh no way, no, I disagree with you. I I mean maybe it's just my own personal experience of that movie because I did watch it a million times as a kid, but (laughs) I feel like every single scene of that movie is extremely memorable. (laughs) See, I've I've never seen the movie. I feel like I have the exact same uh, as Gorse. Anyway, I haven't seen Top Gun, but I've heard Danger Zone a million times. I saw the new movie, Mm. but yeah, I haven't seen it. Dude, the see, yeah. like, uh, Dan, uh, you have, like, this infatuation with, like, cool dude movies, uh, mm-hmm. as you do, right? 
And yeah. I feel like Top Gun is without oh, a yeah. doubt. But my understanding was that there was like movie. there was like a whole romance thing going on, and it was like it was thoughtful. And like I just want Commando. No. I just want him showing up the rock thoughtful. launcher there and killing everyone. <laughs> yeah, I think I watched like the first half of it, and I was like, they're just like training and stuff. Why aren't they like Dude. going and blowing up <laughs> Russia? Love, you know, I love Dan like perusing through like no, not Top Gun. It's clearly too thoughtful for me. I <laughs> Honestly, need to... yeah, I was like, yeah. Oh, my mom likes Top Gun. Like I don't know. Known, yeah, known. <laughs> Uh, patient, dramatic director Tony Scott. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Oh, man, were you off the mark? That's nuts, dude. It's so, new what is great. your favorite? Uh, what's your uh, what's your? Do you have like a top? Give me your top three dude movies. Terminator Two, Face Off, and The Rock. Nice. Yeah. Fuck yeah, those Face, yeah. face Off. Those yeah. are very good. I played uh, Face Off twice at my wedding on a projector. We like just, what? Just going in the background? How oh, long I, was it? I, I rented a big projector. I took it. We brought it down. Several people can uh, corroborate this. Uh, and uh, during the part where they're actually taking the faces off, uh, my wife grabbed the microphone from the DJ and caused, he told everyone, like, hey, everyone, please, please stop what you're doing. Please, please pay attention silence, to this particular please. face off of the face off scene. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I fucking love that. I would put face <laughs> off in my top uh, bunch. I would then go uh, point break. Yes, okay. that's way up there, way up there. Point Break, I just will rewatch it again recently, and I was like, this is maybe the greatest Hollywood movie of all time. <laughs> like, it's perfect. It's, it's absolutely really, perfect. Beginning it is perfect. No notes. The fact yeah. that that yep. movie, the premise of that movie exists, and it honks, like, <laughs> genuinely, <laughs> it, it, it exists in the way that you thought it would when it was bad, but it also has everything else. Yeah. It's uh, unbelievable. Uh, Skydiving oh surfers my. that rob banks and president masks. Yes, and it's perfect. Unbelievable. And then I would go Escape from New York. Jeremy. Hmm. Ooh. Uh, I also probably would put Face Off up there. And uh, additionally, another uh, another Cage classic, Con Air. Ah. Mm. It is very film. good. It's very good, but in the triumvirate, the, the 1996 to 1997 uh, Nick Cage trilogy of The Rock, then Con Air, then Face Off, I do have to say it is a distant third to The Rock and Face Off, despite being yeah. a very fun movie. John it's, Malkovich is having fun, for sure. It's, it's, yeah. it's See, the problem with Con Air is it's more stupid than it is fun, in my That's opinion. That's the thing, and The Rock Just and Face Off are, like, legit good. I do love, yeah, John, I mean, I do well, love John Malkovich, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Rock... The Rock is also very dumb. It's very dumb, but it it's happen, cooler man. than it is dumb. <laughs> it's, so, it could happen. It's grounded in reality. Oh, stop it. We're not There's arguing nothing that. That couldn't happen. What I don't the know the science are you the talking about? Yes. Listen, Alcatraz exists. Uh, angry ex-military dudes exist. CIA guys exist. Uh, prisoners that have escaped prison exist. What part of The Rock could not happen in our uh, mortal realm here? I mean, uh, Nick Cage could not have that hairline ever again. Nice. Uh, that that insane. <laughs> it could have happened. That insane <laughs> car chase in San Francisco, where like they magically don't kill anybody by accident. Oh, you're but driving. you could you could never you could never have sex on a San Francisco roof with that many candles. That's a very good point. That's you a very good point. That. That was the part I always pooped at when I was watching the movie with my mom because it was the only sex part of The Rock. And anytime there was kissing or sex in movies, I had, pretend, sex. I had to pretend to poop. And so that was the part. It was a, this is not happening. That part, that's when I would always poop. It's barely well, sex. Like, wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> what? Yeah. Did you go to poop or you would pretend? No, just if I, your need, if I needed your... to poop, of course. I, I'm in yeah. there already. But like, taking a break. You can't you didn't have just... it like on command ready to go. Half the time I wouldn't even take the seat up. I would just sit there in my shorts and just wait until the humping was done. I mean, you, you might as well have just told your mom like, because obviously your mom's like, hmm, Dan, se Dan seems to always leave when these two are fucking. Uh, I see a pattern here. Like, you know, also in Face Off when they go to disarm the bomb and the like, I'm going to blow you away with the like girl with the, the boobs, the pixel yeah. boobs. That yeah. was a poop part. You you were so adorably awkward with your mom where she was probably just like, oh, I know exactly what you're doing. He just doesn't want to see I don't boobs. think she knew. I don't think she knew. <laughs> yeah, or, yeah, okay, but Or did she think that you were like, like have a little, have a little crank? Right. Well, like, I mean, either... I'm not, I don't even have the visual <laughs> reference at that point, which is just it's weird. You know? He's either yeah, hiding or cranking. One of the two. Always... <laughs> Dan can't even Maybe that's wait. why she never brought it up. That's why she never said anything. <laughs> I've got an ear to the wall like, so I can like, hear the I don't want to embarrass uh, him. He's yeah. going Mama... to crank <laughs> Mama Reckon was just like, was like, he, they can't even get to the, the actual sex and Dan's in the bathroom shooting a rope. <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs>
Couldn't even make it that far. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> the threat of movie sex happening. I gotta go. I gotta go. Ugh, I can't deal with this. <laughs> I hear you. No one likes to watch that with their parents. Uh, thank you, caller Dan Reichert. It is yes. your turn to pick a voicemail. Uh, let's go with slob on my knob dot mp3 yeah keep Beautiful. it in the theme let's do it i remember there was this song a while back that was like slob on my knob like corn on the cob three six mafia like who eats corn like that <laughs> nobody eats corn like that it's fucking weird hmm. throwing it to the back of your throat at thanksgiving dinner for your grandma on the lord to see <laughs> Nah, nah, bro. Just because it rhymes doesn't mean it makes sense. It's fair. He's not wrong. Thank you, caller. He's not wrong. There's only like, really one way to eat corn on the cob, so yeah. Yeah. Doing it that way is would really draw attention. Is the homophobic uh, term of, like, he eats corn the long way? Um, <laughs> in my, uh, I've never, my, heard, I've never my, heard that before. <laughs> my friend... Also had never heard that before, and, like, I think he heard someone say that and was, like, he just started laughing just because he thought that people were eating it like a carrot. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was picturing, just when you say eat corn the long way, I'm picturing you're using your bottom two teeth, and you are, like, from the <laughs> bottom going, like, Brr. Like a cheese grater? No <laughs> way! <laughs> <laughs> That's how is... I'm picturing it. Oh, my God. Uh, I heard that phrase, but I never knew it was, like, a blowjob joke. Yeah. I just thought it was like, oh, that's a weird way to eat corn. No. Yeah, I never heard that. Funny. Yeah, my friend thought it was like, it was like uh, calling someone stupid. Uh, so he was like, yeah, just like. Yes, and, a psycho who like took giggle. a bite out of corn like that. Like not yeah, yeah. only you've broken eating all your the, teeth off. Yeah, eating the stalk or whatever. <laughs> um, but Get anyway. Gym. Yeah. Akilar, anyway. it's yeah. your turn. It, oh, thank you. Okay, great. Uh. Let's, oh, okay, this is pretty funny. Uh, this this drew my eye right away. It's some 41, but uh, S-O-M-E 41. So let's Incredible see that. Stuff. Not MP3. Incredible. Can I get the dump truck crew's opinion on the band uh, some 41? Love y'all. Oh, wow. Bye. Love you too. Thank you, caller. Uh, let's go around the room. First off, Dan, do you know who some 41 yeah. is? Yeah. I remember the uh, video for Fat Lip would uh, air nice. all the time, and I just remember hating the lead singer because I thought he looked like a punk, but not in the punk way that they were trying to look like. I thought he just looked like a punk, <laughs> not like punk music. Does no, he he looked like uh, what like a uh, what like a '60s detective would call like a street hooligan. Yeah, like, he, like, yeah, his, punk. his face yeah. would be making the sound. He's like, hmm, hmm. So like, you know his that's name. all I can see. Yeah, no, that's, that's know it's, he's I know. got the most. He's got a name that you're gonna love. Isn't to it like Phineas or something? It. It's Derek Wibley. Oh, Derek Wibley. What, what a punk name. ass name, right? Yeah, yeah a what a punk. Name. I was right. Uh, <laughs> um, I right, well, I'm not gonna body shame the man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you freaking all of you are canceled. All three of you. How dare Is you. a name part of the, he, 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 name? Is that body you, shaming? <laughs> You were body shaming him by saying that he looks like his name. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fair enough. Um, but yeah. I was gonna say, uh, uh, I am. Uh, I'm pro Sum Forty One. I think that they are one of the more palatable pop punk bands of that era, and they're also just like they have great little stinker energy that like <laughs> is actually punk. Like they actually behave like. Fun little punks, and uh, they also. I'm I'm very pro trying to trick people into listening to metal. Of course, like that's mm. my whole thing. Sure, and they do that. <laughs> you think they so? try to get people to listen. They uh, well, they try to get people to listen to uh, Iron Maiden and Judas Priest. Sure, in sure, Fat sure. Lip, right? And they uh, most of the records end with them doing a metal like a a metal sound alike song. So like they'll oh, play cool. straight up metal. Pain for Pleasure at the end of pain. The, that album. Yeah, um, Pain for Pleasure. They have uh, Grab the Devil by the Horns and Fuck Him in the Bottom. Oh, okay. <laughs> I realized after I said fuck, I was like, maybe they we can't say that on the show. I don't know. You can. You I don't can. know the rules. Yeah, <laughs> I don't fine. know the rules. Uh, yeah, Fuck Him in the Ass. It's uh, interesting. And, okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm pro Sum 41. Uh, they seem like... Uh, 
no one in that band has uh, been a creep, which is saying a lot for a for that era. For, for that that's era, huge. yeah, that's huge, a big deal. huge deal. Um, yeah, and they just I don't know. They seem to like want to give back to the community uh, that they're a part of, which is good. I don't know. Yeah, which good is job, Canada? Is that is that what it is? It's Canada. Yeah, yeah. The, I mean, Cana the Canadian, the Tim Hortons community. I, I I sort of like slot them with like the simple plans of the world, right? Where from that sort of uh, so Canadian, yeah, exactly. Um, I never was a, a huge fan either way, but they were just sort of like there. Mm. I yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's maybe not the fairest uh, compare. I think that they're in my mind they're closer to like a Blink One Eighty Two because they sure. they had back to back sense. hits the same years as them. And yeah. the numbers. And they fell yeah. albums with big hits. Dan's uh, right. The numbers too. The yeah. numbers really. Yeah. Numbers really add to it as well. You know, uh, Jordan, I'm with you. I think they're. I think they're a pretty good band. I like them fine. Uh, very good videos. I think the Fat Lip video looks like a very fun party. I would have yeah. loved to have been there. <laughs> Spider Man uh, music video too. Spider Man music video is very right. funny. And they have the one where they made everything out of the little toys, and they did like the robot chicken thing before robot chicken did it. And yep. They all had their faces taped on top of the uh, Metallica Spawn toys. I thought that was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. I loved cool it. Bands. Yeah. Give me some, some 41. All right. You got it. We'll get you a nice popping hot order of some 41 <laughs> then. Popping hot. Popping hot. Piping hot. Piping hot. Popping hot. However you want it. However you want it is how we're going to serve it to you. Eddie Hot! Uh, <laughs> uh, chat, it's your turn to pick a voicemail, and the first response I got was corn. Did we do... we? Okay, we did corn, but not that kind of corn. So yes, corn.mp3, please. Hey, everyone. Uh, I live in rural Ontario, Canada, and uh, I had a thought pop crossed my mind the other day, and I find it comforting that... Uh, I'm pretty close to corn. I could go out my back door and walk for two minutes and I could be in a cornfield touching corn. Uh, or I could go in the opposite direction and see some cows. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious, how long would you have to walk from where you are right now to touch corn? Thank you. I do Does like to be in the wild. Yeah, that's a what good you... question. Does it have to be growing corn? Yeah, it's, just, yeah. it's, corn. It's, it's three yes. blocks. I can he... walk three blocks yeah. to the grocery store. No, yeah, he's talking about like cornfields. He's not talking about like he talk. He's talking about like actually growing corn. Dan. When he said touch corn. He just he said, said touch yeah, corn. Yeah, letter oh, no, of law. This isn't a know. riddle. This isn't a fucking like riddle we have to unpack. Okay, he's talking about cornfields. Taskmaster. We yeah. Don't have to... Okay. <laughs> um, that, and I almost Dan, like the phrase <laughs> touching <laughs> corn better than touching grass at this yes. point. <laughs> uh, so let's try and lean into that and get that going. Um, I, growing up, I could walk a mile and get in touch corn for sure where I lived in Jersey. Uh, now, probably a couple, couple, uh, maybe a couple hours, but I could get there. I could get there. Growing up in Kansas, obviously, that was a lot easier. Uh, there's a lot of corn, but I, is corn like a regional thing? Does Connecticut have corn? Uh, I would think so. I, like, I know Jer yeah. Jersey, Jersey corn is like a thing. Like, people, corn I've, Island, not, yeah. I've not seen physical evidence of corn anywhere near. A lot of, I want to see there's corn everywhere. Like, corn okay. seems real versatile. Like, it can fucking grow. In, yeah. I feel like, you know, you throw anything at it and it's like, yeah, I'll grow. I'm corn. Like, okay. I'll guess three hours. Okay. Cool. I could walk surprisingly across the street because my neighbor has a garden and is growing like has two like two corn stalks so there it is technically nice. there that counts that. that counts that counts i uh i think i would have to go to the exact same place where i because i i only live about a half hour from where i grew up and so uh the i think the same place where i would have walked to from there which at that time would have been maybe like a quarter of a mile to touch corn i now would just walk to that place i think is probably the closest corn plant that i know right. of very mm. good Thank there you, caller. Is. Again, let's all collectively agree that we are going to try and make the phrase "go touch corn" a thing. Yes. So okay. this could be like a uh, in so like, like a kick rocks, the yeah. touch grass. When yeah. you say to somebody like you need to, you know, touch grass, like get 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 offline a little bit, right? Right. When you say Unplug. touch corn, you're saying to get out of your uh, to get out of your coastal bubble. You know, that's like, more effort. 
corn is more effort than grass. Talk to more people, you know. Touch corn. (laughs) You you know, take the week off, Dan, and 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 go fucking touch corn. Okay. (laughs) Search corn in Google Maps. Yeah. I was going to say it could be a kick rocks kind of phrase, like, ah, go touch corn. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, like you could deliver it with the same energy. Oh, I'm with you. Go touch corn. <laughs> it's <laughs> sort of jet like hand gesture. I think that motherfucker just told me to touch corn. <laughs> Joe Gordon, touch corn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to make that fucking catch on. That's what we're going to do. Uh, Jeremy, it's back to you, please. Uh, choose a voicemail. All right. Um,. I don't see any other ones that are blatantly pimping something from me, so I'm going to go ahead and say, shoots hot dogs. Okay. What up, you big dirty dumpers? Question. Would you rather have a shotgun that shoots meatballs or a crossbow that shoots hot dogs? Thanks. Bye. Mm. Asking the tough questions. Thank you, caller. That's a great question. I think the shotgun would be more useful. The crossbow would be more funny because if you shot the hot dog, it would like flop around all funny. But let's say there's like a big bug on your ceiling and you can't reach it. I mean, you could use the meatball shotgun to actually like, get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, the but, the, but the, 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 the drawbacks of shooting a meatball, because well, I'm assuming we're all picturing the same thing, which is a sauced meatball, right? Yes, yeah, of, of course. course. Yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah. So the drawbacks of shooting the meatball onto your ceiling far outweigh the negatives of having a bug on your ceiling, right? Like there's <laughs> well, no way gonna, that <laughs> Well, but what you're other gonna option do you have? With, well, you're going to have you're going to end up with more bugs because yes. you shot food on exactly. the ceiling. Exactly. You've just the, fed the bug. Okay, it's That's like a wasp you did, like. and you're afraid it's going to sting your your dog or baby no, or something. No, I don't you reach know? for my meatball <laughs> shotgun in that situation, dude. What do you do? What other option do you have? Do you have something in your house that could handle that situation? If there's a, well, there's bugs in my house all the time, I don't reach for some sort of like projectile weapon. I fucking if you get had a fly one, spotter. you would. If you had a meatball no, shotgun, well, you'd you can have get something. So you can well, get those things that shoot salt. You ever see I those? I thought about that. I thought about those. Yeah. Those are cool. Here's a here's the thing that we're not thinking about. He mm. said shotgun, which yeah. means that the meatball <laughs> oh. is not going. It's going to the cone. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, it's even better than even better spray. I was sure. picturing but it will uh, be completely ineffective. <laughs> it'll be so ineffective towards a uh, a bug because it'll just split into pieces yeah. that could but miss the, salt, the bug the, the entirely. Salt, the salt shotguns do that too. Meat no. is bigger than salt. Like, no, I would think that would be more effective. I think the Wait, salt is more... Meat is bigger than salt. <laughs> yeah. Am I no. wrong? No, Am no, I no. wrong? Crystallized no. salt is is more... Is is denser? Yeah, and, like, that rips probably through more a bug. Compact. But yeah, in projectile form, up up. I think the meat chunks would be bigger than the salt little... Okay, so, so uh, disintegrate. We're all picturing... I'm assuming we're all picturing a big sauced meatball coming out of the end of a big Elmer Fudd style shotgun. I was thinking of yeah. saw it off. And now yeah. you, uh, Jordan, you have brought into the idea now that it, it scatters like a shotgun. So have we been picturing the wrong kind of meatballs? Are we actually talking about little Swedish meatballs like at a party? And so they are the pellets of the shotgun and they are coming out as, as you know, oh, a bunch of them enough. all at once. Mm. That's, a, that's case, a fair point. I'm mm. going with the shotgun because... Ultimately, the utility of both of these things is the novelty of shooting these things into your face in a funny way. <laughs> well, right. and I think, and that think I'm more about, interested like, in the meatballs than the hot dog. Yeah. Think about like in an intruder situation. I do think that like the bunch of little meatballs would be better and non-lethal <laughs> and would love- get them to leave, you know? I love that Dan is 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 thinking only in combat. <laughs> home invasion bug, it's just home invasion home invasion by bug or or human criminal yeah, yeah. <laughs> look if he gets some shotgun blast of meatballs to the face he's getting in his car and going home dude it's a one-way street with this guy that's it they no other us. application how uh, can we how can this be used for self-defense dude the so the hot dog wouldn't be great for that. It would just flop no. around. Wait, the best you could do is maybe choke somebody with like a really good shot. <laughs> it's, we're like not talking about a really... long sonic cheese coney that you, you can choke someone with that. We're talking normal also, hot dogs, you... like seven inches. Unless you're freezing the hot dog beforehand, Ooh. I don't think the hot dog goes very far. No, it just thing. flops. Yeah. yeah, it flops. It flops out. and falls down. Whereas I think the I think you could feasibly shoot meatballs out of the gun better. Yeah. yeah. I think the Probably not, because I I do think that even this tiny Swedish meatballs would turn into shrapnel and explode. Yeah. If we're talking about actual practicality, and, and we're, we're talking, talking about, about like, the mechanism of a gun, right? We're talking about it working like a gun does. Yeah, here's the thing. Uh, I I I 
from a like do I want a gun that just if it shoot if it shot a solid meatball mm. yes that's very funny I love that um mm. I also think that if you shot I think in that same context you got to look at a crossbow shooting a hot dog as a crossbow shooting a full bunned and decorated <laughs> hot dog <laughs> not, that Chicago does not style. flop. Chicago yeah. style. It's got there the Greek go. salad on top or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying that's, to think of not, that's what we're seeing. I'm trying to think of non-combat applications and like, I'm thinking again, the meatball shotgun. Cause like sometimes I, sometimes I have trouble swallowing. I got anxiety and stuff when I eat. And so imagine if I could, you know, how like when you beer bong a beer, you don't have to think about swallowing really. In that instance, if I wanted to eat a bunch of meatballs, could I just put the shotgun in my mouth and shoot it into my stomach? And that way I don't have to worry about swallowing it. Right? Nope. It that would be your mouth. Velocity. Yeah. That <laughs> but it wouldn't be your like, mouth, not your stomach. Would it hurt me? I would hit my uvula on the way down. Let's, but Dan, let's never put together a situation where you are facing a shotgun toward your face. How about that? How Only about a start... meatball shotgun. No, no, no. We're it's not the question doing is, that. How much does a meatball shotgun look like a real shotgun? <laughs> I don't care. I was picturing it's indiscernible. I would. Oh think. no! Yeah. I thought it was the meatball <laughs> shotgun. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm picturing, I'm picturing, uh, it's a shotgun, it's an Elmer Fudd style double barrel <laughs> shotgun, and uh -huh. it is spray painted to the Italian flag, right? It's like, it's, it's segmented <laughs> off in the color. Red, so white, and yeah. green. Oh, fuck, yeah, that's I, all the, right. I'm going crossbow, though, shooting a fully decorated hot dog, because <laughs> I think that's a lot of fun. I'm much more of a medieval guy than I am a World War II guy, so sure, I'm going, sure. I think... Like that is also like it's 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 Nathan's colors, which yes. we all fucking love. Mm. Uh, and I think uh, I think the visual of a fly of just like catapulting a fully beautifully decorated hot dog. In my case, I am a I am a non meat eater, so it'll be a gorgeous gorgeous uh, tote. Uh, what a carrot. carrot! Yeah, it'll be one of the carrots. <laughs> it's the carrot vegan one. Well, I mean, you've seen at baseball games when they have the hot dog cannon thing, right? Yeah, shit's it's in a hot dog. Yeah, it's incredible. I've never yeah. seen oh, a hot dog. Seen no, you never seen a hot dog yet? Yeah. at the KC Royals games. Oh man, he had a hot dog gun. It was awesome. Yeah, oh. it comes it out fun and a wrapper. Fun. Wrap exactly. Wow. Yeah. No, 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 with the wrapper, and a lot of times it would like fly off, and then just like the hot dog, and, like the bun just kind of flops down, and the hot dog, like just the meat, hits someone in the face. Mm. Get it? Wow. Yeah. I love it. I love it too. Uh, Gorsinio, please choose the next voice. You didn't pick one, uh, Jeff. What do you want? A, I, a hot dog I, gun or, or or hot dog crossbow or meatball gun? Um, I think I want the I, I think I want the meatball just because it would just be fun to kind of like blast that uh, outside, not on my ceiling, uh, somewhere else, like maybe on someone's like garage or something. That seems like fun. You know? All right. Well, all three of you are messy and not helping gun control. Uh, yeah, we're I'm messy. Happy we're to... <laughs> messy meatball boys. That's what we are, dude. <laughs> uh, yeah, messy little meatball boys. All right, I'm going to. Uh, uh, I, I, I guess next I'm gonna pick willing to wrestle. Dot MP3. Okay. Howdy, this is Aaron from Houston. I will give you one dollar to wrestle and beat a one foot alligator. I'll give you ten dollars to wrestle and beat a two foot alligator. One hundred dollars, three feet. One thousand dollars, four feet. Ten thousand dollars, five feet. And so on and so on. Hopefully you can see the pattern. Wrestling and beating just means you are on its back, holding its mouth closed. This battle happens on a football field. On just big flat surface with a lot of room. What's the largest alligator you are willing to wrestle? Okay. Thank I'm you gonna for your go. Opinion. None of them. None of them. None of them. Because it's well, number one, it's animal abuse, and number two, I don't want to get bit. <laughs> right. And the stated, well, the stated figures are very low for what he's asking. Yeah, yeah I, someone, I, <laughs> someone in the chat put it very uh, well. Killer Kid Clever said, uh, "Not worth it. The scale is busted, and that's what it is." Like, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. the drop off happens so. F I'm like, no, okay. So if you're saying a thousand fast, yeah. for a one foot alligator, yeah, we'll talk. But yeah, like, a, yeah, a yeah, one foot one alligator, foot, no. you just step on it. Like, come yeah, on, exactly. I, will, I will get a subway sandwich for alligator. fucking alligator. <laughs> yeah, fuck that. Yeah, and but and of course, you know, not even making the trip. <laughs> we're, we're we're in a world where like this is all you know, no real alligator are getting uh, hurt in this. This is just
just a. Uh, just said it's just, that you would step on the yes, alligator in the fake world. But it could be like a hologram situation. It could be like yeah, a VR it's, it's type Star real. Trek situation. You're, It'd you're be simulated. A CGI alligator. I sure. would do it for a dollar because yes, nothing's no, you, gonna happen. You have it's to like do a experiment. You just, it's a CGI yeah. alligator. I'm doing the fucking. I'm doing the ten foot. Of course, because nothing's yeah. gonna happen. Of course. Well, no, but it's one of those yeah. matrix yeah. things where it's like if you die in the simulation, you will die in real life. So the stakes are there, but you're not hurting. It's like the alligator, alligator from a racer. I like that. The matrix in this. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> really, <laughs> which really. is also animal abuse. <laughs> Putting uh, yeah, no, yeah. it's not. It's ones and zeros. It's not. <laughs> no, not if there's a real one with a matrix plug. Yeah, that's oh, what I mean. oh wait, the alligators in the yeah. matrix. The yeah, yeah. No, wait, the alligator didn't have to get back in. He's in the alligator board. matrix. Yeah. <laughs> Time out. Not everybody in. Oh, yeah. Not every. What if the alligator? No. If we're talking about matrix rules, they if they were like it. Agent Smiths, okay. If it's like an Agent Smith alligator, software. the software is not a real person. Yeah. Yeah. The software is fucking the software. I don't yeah, think they okay. ever discuss whether like there's pigeons, you know, plugged into little pigeon goop software. pods and whatever. It's all software. Like... No, no, they actually do it. That part in the park in the uh, the third movie, I think. I think she's saying like, "Oh, do you see like these pigeons?" I think she specifically the oracle is. We just watched it before the fourth one. And <laughs> Too many people wrote they... into the Wachowski sisters. <laughs> Too many people like me being like, "Wait, is there a pigeon matrix?" <laughs> yeah, they they talk about pigeons being like code basically Yo. in that universe. Oh. I would watch the Pigeon Matrix in a fucking heartbeat. That's all I got. It's like say. the Good Feathers from the Animaniacs, but like they're exactly. The oh uh, shit! <laughs> Italian Matrix, like incredible Pigeon Italian Matrix. Next level. Like, that's the Beautiful. big brain. <laughs> it's oh, a big shit. brain idea. Oh fuck! <laughs> Wait, that's follow up question. The Vince McMahon falling out of the. <laughs> <laughs> Are we limited to the one alligator? Is it only the one? Oh, what is there like mean? a multiplier? Like if yeah, you if like, you do can like, like two, do you get like a times three multiplier? Yeah. What I was gonna <laughs> say is like I feel like I could pretty pretty safely just stomp out a one foot alligator if I had yeah. to. Yeah, yeah. And I get like say like a thousand of them into the football. Oh, you're gonna get tired. A thousand. Sorry, we I mean, again, plan you have to make it worth you do the that. trip to the football stadium is the thing. <laughs> you, dude, you you are not stomping out a thousand one foot alligators in in one run, dude. That would just and they just I can't believe we kill, we had to kill all of these thousand you, that, one foot that many lives lost so that you could you know not even pay your rent. Yes, you know, right? say. <laughs> awesome. Oh man, yeah. truly truly pathetic. Uh, so thank you, caller. This, yeah, yeah, thank you, uh, but no to none of them. So you yeah. made that entire list for no reason. And how no do we get on a football field? I don't understand. Uh, Dan Reichert, please yes. choose your last voicemail. Uh, I'm going to say Creed, hoping it's about the movie. Mm. Okay, so rank these four bands. Uh, Sum 41, Jimmy World, uh, P.O.D., don't remember what it stands for. Gonna be honest, right, on, and yes. um, Creed. Oof. Go with Creed. Y'all have a good one. Bye. This is pretty easy for me. Yeah, yeah same. Uh, some forty-one coming up twice in one voicemail dump truck. Pretty That's weird. Insane. Wow. Yeah. Pretty wild. Uh, for me, number one, Jimmy World. Number two, some forty-one. Three and four is real. The real heartache here. I'll I'll say Creed number three, POD number four. Oh, yeah. really? oh, back yeah. I have to jump in there. What the heck, dude? Why? What's wrong? POD? What were they? P -P -P number one, able on, able on death. It was like a Christian yeah. thing. They were just too religious for me, dude. So good, dude. You so is Creed. That. Yeah, but more so than Creed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, yeah, they're not. <laughs> they might be. They might be, but they're I think, way better. <laughs> yeah, I think like uh, like optically, it, uh, it, it came out more for POD than it did for Creed. Can I can I make a confession? Uh, and my it doesn't matter that I don't have video on. I uh, used to write POD lyrics on my folder in elementary school. Nice dude. Oh, I like yeah. POD. I straight up like them. There we go. Yeah, like I like there's there's like two or three POD songs I had in, like in my Napster or something back then. For How many sure. Creed songs did you have? Probably more. I think there was one Creed album that I enjoyed in high school. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I gotta boy. say, I, I don't care for any of them on an equal level, but I have to give the number one to P.O.D. just because they did Rey Mysterio's theme song. Yeah, so, I was going to yeah, say, yeah. the okay. Rey Mysterio song actually goes. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, 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 it's alarming how <laughs> yes. hard a WWE song 
uh, by P.O.D. goes, but it goes. There's nothing yeah, you can do about perfect. it. Perfect. Great entrance music. Yeah, I mean, you guys are making me feel real bad about putting Creed number three. I'm not going to lie. I'm happy to switch it, but I guess I can't. The deal's been done. You can't. The deal Here, is done. It's done. But let me just say that Jimmy Eat World is such a number one oh, far and away uh, in front of all three of these other bands. For really? Sure. Oh, yeah. I love Jimmy Eat World, dude. Clarity? I, Come on. I know, I know the two uh, songs. <laughs> you, really? I mean, Clarity and Static Prevails are a big part of my childhood, for sure. Which one is Clarity? Uh, I know Cla the American the song. It's not the, the American You Bleed one? American is the name of that album, right? Yeah, but that's further. I think that's like, like 2002 that that or three. Album. Yeah, that's, that's later. Good. Yeah. Uh, the title track's pretty good. Yeah, those guys I'll, are they're, they're fun. I'll probably do some 41... Uh, Jimmy Eat World, uh, POD, and Creed. Mm. Okay. I'd go some 41 POD, Jimmy Eat World, Creed. Wow. 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 Yeah. Like I said, Jeremy I loves like Christ. <laughs> <laughs> loves, <laughs> loves Christ. Jeremy, big Christ guy. Didn't Make know me that. curious. What can I say? <laughs> Dan, what about you? Go no, so I don't like any of them, but the Ray Mysterio thing gives it POD for me. So POD's number one. I guess just out of default because it has a wrestling connection. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was, I mean, those, all those bands were during the period where I was basically like forbidden from liking any uh, current music. If it wasn't, if it was post 1978, it wasn't real music, you know, with the Paul Record influence. I'm, so. I'm sorry. This was like, let's watch The Rock, but not listen to music. What do you yep. mean? <laughs> no, my, well, no, no, my mom was the action movie. Uh, she was always in separate houses and all that stuff. But anytime I would be curious about a band, like when I was a kid, it was Smashing Pumpkins and Rage Against the Machine and stuff. I would ask yeah. my dad, like, oh, what about these bands? They seem cool. And he'd be like, well, it's technically music because they're using guitars, but they're not like, they're not good, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I was like, okay. Mama I guess I can't Mia. Like them. Oh, yeah. no. Oh, wild. no. That wild is stuff. Truly, truly wild. Um, my gosh. Uh, all right. I will take this one. Um, Jan, please give me cghosts.mp3. Hi, Dumpers. This is Chuck from Washington, D.C. Um, I have a cat. It's pretty cool. Uh, but not everyone likes cats because they see ghosts and shit. So I was wondering, <laughs> what domesticated no, animal do you inherently distrust and why? Thank Ooh. Oh, this is such parrots. a, is such a soft Parrots, ball. number one. I hate oh, really? parents. I really? really don't. I don't trust people who have them. I think they're weird. My aunt growing up had one, and it would curse her ex-husband's name all the time. Mm. It's so weird, man. Parrots are fucked up. Because they, you know what it is? You're right. Is You're like, right. They repeat what you say around them, right? And that's why I would curse her ex-husband. And they're so they become these sort of like mirrors of your worst self, you know. And they just like become reflections of like what kind of person you are. And like, Ooh. I just I never liked that fucking thing. And uh, it was named after Willie Nelson, as it were. Huh. <laughs> Dude, I, Willie I'm Nelson not... the bird. <laughs> <laughs> it's Mama, the bird. Holy shit! I fucking love that answer. Like your conviction is so con yeah. brilliant. Answer like, I mean, like my layup uh, answer is obviously cats because they're fucking terrible. But like, dude, yeah. uh, the bird answer is so spot on. Not to mention the fact that like, what the fuck, parrots? Like they can fucking speak perfect English. Like they can just. They can not just, perfect. they're not like yeah, fluent English. English. <laughs> not, they're not fluent. They just have a couple of phrases. But, here, but that's, but that's insane. What other animal can just like straight up record and hit play right back at you? <laughs> you seen like, that video of the parrot singing bodies by Drowning Pool? No. You need to look on YouTube for it's parrot drowning pool. It's incredible. Clearly like the owner just left bodies playing on repeat until the parrot learned it. <laughs> that's, that's torture, man. It's really good. Yeah, it also does kind of feel like parrots become sort of a conduit for people's desire to like do harm to animals. <laughs> yeah, I like plus uh, putting a, a a parrot in a cage like it's just that's just needlessly cruel in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what the fuck? Parrots are weird, man. Um, Dan, it's exotic just... birds overall, man. They're like these beautiful, colorful, feathery creatures from like another part of the world, and we're like, I'm gonna put you in my cage in Glen Cove, Long Island. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how about you live the next 70 years of your life doing that motherfucker like yeah you're gonna love watching matlock with me <laughs> I, <do. laughs> I agree with bird i don't trust a bird pet owner or a bird pet you know p i i'm with you there jeremy um 
think I, I I'm trying to think of like some like an animal I distrust more than like a bird or a cat, and I kind of don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I think you're I right. Have another answer. I think you're um, right. I think I have reptiles like, are... that need a heat lamp. That's kind of a weird one too. But I don't mm. have I don't have a tr trouble with the animal as much as with the person who has it. In yeah, that but case. like yeah. any any prick in college who like just had a snake in their fuck. Like, what are you doing, that's, dude? Like, I was about gross. to say is like this is not necessarily the animal, but it's the guy, the specific guy. When I worked at AMC theaters when I was like fourteen in the break room, he would always like in his uniform, he'd be like, "Hey, check this out." And he had a little sugar glider. Do you know what these things are? What? Yeah. yeah. They're like little, like tiny flying squirrel looking things. And he would just theater. have it in his pocket while he worked his shift at the concession stand. And then on the break, he'd be like, oh, check it out. Yeah, you can jump around. Can, like, no way that, that complies with any sort of codes. <laughs> that is such a character. Like you just described. Just shuts your AMC down instantly. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's yeah, everyone that's that, that guy. AMC. I was like, yeah. Yeah. That everyone sounds like that the... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, uh, I was just going to say, uh, you all have like Lyme disease now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people coming in to see. I assume like what, like what year is this? Revenge like of the Toy Sith Story is two. coming out. <laughs> yeah. Dude. People, sh people lining up for the midnight showing of like Return of the King. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, a and there's like yeah. a sign that says, "Sorry, we're closed. Everyone got Lyme disease." <laughs> yeah. a what a, a sugar glider! I've li yeah. I've never heard of that. Yeah, that's yeah. I had he actually pulled out a little squirrel in the break room. I'm it's gonna so go strange. Ferret. Oh my god. Ferret. Oh yeah. Don't trust are, a ferret. They're freaky. Yeah. yeah. Spine situation like... is so weird, man. Yeah. I trust I I I feel like I trust most animals in like the wild because it's like I'm fucking with them. I'm the one who's not to be trusted yeah. in this environment. But so I think we gotta narrow it down to pets. And the pet I trust the least is a fucking ferret because it's yeah. not supposed to be there. I've never met I, I've like I've seen a well-behaved pet bird. It was only one time, but I've seen it. I've met a lot of cats that I do actually like. Mm -hmm. uh, never, never in my life have I met a well-behaved pet ferret. If they're out of the cage, they're making a mess, and the owner loses them, and it's just really why you shouldn't have put it in there in the first place. Yeah, they're, they're just chasing those cans and shit. Yeah, totally. Get fuck out of here. I've seen I've seen like well-behaved rabbits. I've seen like rabbits who are just like psyched to be there. They're just like, yo, I'm part of the family. I just fucking love, love it. I love it. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, fer ferrets constantly like in escape mode for sure. There's yeah, there's no they, putting that. Yeah, you can't make that thing feel at home because it knows that it isn't. Yeah, <laughs> I, I have a weird thing. I don't know how you guys feel about this. I have a weird thing where like I kind of think raccoons are cute as hell. Do like, you I know? Think, they're, They're very something, cute. I think like everyone associates them with just like garbage dumpster animals, and like yeah, they well, are for sure. They're trying but, like, to survive. Totally, totally. It's but like out there, but like there's something <laughs> so fucking cute about them. Like and, They're beautiful animals. I actually, I actually did see like a a, a ravenous one once where it had to get put down because it had rabies and shit, and that was clearly not cute at all. But like they adorable, man, for sure, for sure. Yeah. I uh, I helped one escape a garbage pail once at work, and it was like a very rewarding day for me. Right on. <laughs> I worked at a park, and like the there were two rewarding experiences there. One was wasting Bill O'Reilly's time on two consecutive occasions, Ooh. and the other was helping this raccoon out of a garbage pail. <laughs> oh, you're doing the Lord's work there. You're like, okay, little buddy, hang on. I've got my meatball shotgun, and I'm just gonna blow a hole in the bottom of this garbage can. <laughs> Don't worry. Oh, that's Love awesome. It. That's awesome. All right. Very good, uh, gentlemen. Well, this brings us to the final voicemail of the show. We went to the chat for this one. Um, forgive me. Uh, there's been an audible on the first one. So we're going to pivot to the second uh, request here. Uh, Jen, please play climatechange.mp3. Oh, bummer. <laughs> hey, Dumpers. It's Mark from Philly. Uh, I've just been thinking, uh, with climate change eventually going to take us all, um, mm -hmm. would you rather escape to an underwater uh, colony, or would you rather go to space and have a space colony? Mm -hmm. Give me Atlantis 2, and I'll take it every day of the week. Thank you for the show. Love you. Bye. Absolutely First of all, it's yeah, all underwater. Underwater. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, man. No, space I think all day. After <laughs> this, we should do 
as a palate cleanser, I think after this we should do Bruce Springsteen just for fun. <laughs> Agreed. We'll do that for sure. Uh, uh, you're I'm, right. I I'm gonna I I don't know what am I picking? Neither of like a, assisted take me the death. fuck out of here. Certainly death. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm not doing either of these because when one of these things doesn't work, it's gonna be a much more terrifying doom. Totally. Uh, like I, you know, man, the underwater thing. There's nothing worse than the than the prospect of drowning right like yeah. who wants to drown no like what a terrible unimaginably horrific death and then what i'm in space what are, like what are we even doing there air, you're just air drown I, it's just <laughs> air air drown. Just explode or something like i think the, the space I bet it's be not good. Drowning. yes yeah. total recall was not a documentary but i imagine something <laughs> right. bad happened uh happens when you try and breathe where there's no uh fucking yeah. you know oxygen so. I'd say it, if I could be a snork, if I could be like a fucking like water breathing <laughs> oh. little like little reptile guy, I'm going underwater all fucking day, baby. Yeah, Show me those the, colorful fish. <laughs> if we mute, if if we before we do the water colony, if we figure out how to like give everybody water world Kevin Costner gills, I'm in. Man. Without the pee drinking, but you realize I'll drink, I'll, 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 I'll drink piss if if, <laughs> yeah. if I'm I'm not like, above it. Whatever. Yeah. If the tech is there to filter out everything. Mariana's trench and shit. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I'll drink my piss. Uh, so, like, okay, let's say Waterworld does become a thing and we have to act fast. You can't just act fast and go to space, right? Like, you could probably, I mean, you could probably, like, you know, a rapture adjacent uh, situation could probably be done, right? If there's some, I don't know. I'm obviously just having fun here, but. I would, I would probably go if I had to choose. I would go for underwater. I think because yeah. I'll, at the end of the day, you just, you just like float up to the surface. I feel like right? though, in, in like sci-fi and stuff, I feel like I've seen so many cool like space societies and stuff. And the only underwater one I can think of is Bioshock, and that didn't seem great for anyone. So yeah, uh, Aquaman. Yeah. What Aquaman. about America's finest film of the last decade, Aquaman? I have Aquaman. not seen that. <laughs> Good point. Aquaman is the greatest. What? In Aquaman, are they having the fun greatest. down there? Oh my god, there's an octopus playing drums. Dan, playing drums. are you there's serious? There's a crab Gundam. <laughs> crab Gundams. Jewish what? crabs. There's a, they, Jewish crabs, yeah, Jewish crabs. They really? have Gundams. Uh, Julie, Julie Andrews is, is, a, is a kaiju. It's unbelievable stuff. It's what? It's real, man. Wow. It's the only good superhero movie. Is this, a, is this a Marvel one, or is this a no, it's it's DC. DC? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, um, all right. Yeah, it's Jason Momoa, and there's a great part where, like, some guy that we've like barely met in the entire movie like gets this special sword and someone's like it's like what should we call you he says call me master of the ocean or some shit like that just like ocean out of nowhere master. guy we've never call met before <laughs> he's just like call, call me, me ocean master <laughs> oh see i didn't know i didn't know aquaman was like this kind of movie Dude, it's so insane it's directed yeah. by the fast and the furious guy it's unhinged oh, it's so good. Check this out. it feels like your brain is just like a wet washcloth and it's just wringing it and wringing it and wringing it okay. until you are just dry at the end and you're like well i guess i just I guess I'm an Aquaman guy now. Yeah. Is it good, good, or is it like good, bad? Oh, it's no, bad. It's, it's, bad good. it's okay, everything, okay. man. Yeah. It's, it's got every angle. <laughs> I've heard huh. someone. I heard someone describe it as saying, "Like I've never seen anything that is simultaneously a ten and a zero at the same time." <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. Okay, like, you're selling is, this. Like it's like I I I. Every time, like, something bad happens, it's also sick. Like, <laughs> like I, I, every time, like, a bad choice was made, that no one should ever make it a movie, but uh, my reaction was, fuck yeah. <laughs> like, Incredible. I had no idea this was that, yeah. this was the, what that movie was. That's awesome. Every time somebody comes, at any, the, the people who live underwater, every time they come up out of the water, which is a lot of the movie, every time they come out of the water, the first thing they do, vomit up all the water they were breathing. <laughs> they show it every time. And they never don't show it. <laughs> so awesome. good. <laughs> all right. We might have to do something with this, Dad. We gotta yeah. figure this out. That sounds pretty good. Um, Pitbull. You gotta watch so, that movie, uh, fellas. Pitbull yeah. also covers Af Toto's Africa in this movie as well. Oh what? my God, he sure does! Wow, Jan, mm. thank you. That was a very important detail. Yeah, yeah. nice little um, pop-up video bubble there. Thanks, brother. Um, um, damn. You want to do Bruce and yeah, then get out Bruce. of here? Let's do Bruce and say goodbye. Let's see. Hey, Dumbers, this is Travis uh, from Florida, formerly from Philly, and I just got a quick one here. 
why the fuck are these Bruce Springsteen tickets so goddamn expensive? I was, mm. like, really pumped. I was going to buy, like, tickets to, like, all the shows in Florida. I was going to go to, like, Tampa or Orlando, maybe even down to Hollywood, Florida. Who the fuck knows? Mm. But they're, like, multiple thousands of dollars for one fucking ticket. And, I mean, I'm not saying that the boss isn't worth it, but, like, fuck, man. So, anyway, um, Bacalar. Could you, like, go over to his house and, like, tell him to make the tickets cheaper? Anyway, love you guys. Bye. <laughs> just knock 2012, on the, and the door it was, like, his 120 bucks, I think, to see him back then. Yeah, Dan, that's that's not what this is. This is now. This is this, yeah. this is Bruce. Is that across the board of concert? I don't really go to concerts. Are, is that normal, or How is that Bruce? Is Bruce? No. He's probably, Bruce is probably like 72, 73, I want to say. Yeah, my man is risking life and limb out there, <laughs> you know, doing tours and shit. I'm sorry that he's asking you to pay, but, <laughs> I mean, he could die from fucking, from the, from, you know. His aunt yeah. Coco could come visit, and he could just be out of here, man. <laughs> I was I was thinking about this the other day because, like, a lot of people in my family were like, "Oh, we're totally getting these Bruce tickets," and I'm just like, "All right." And then they're like, "They're a lot of money. It's insane." I don't I don't know why this specifically is happening with Br- like. Is it because he's he might not tour that much anymore? He is an elderly man, but he still fucking got it though. He's like he'll still put on a three hour though. concert. Yeah. Just yeah. talking strictly from a COVID perspective here, like he's like he's an old guy, like he's in the high risk zone, and yeah. like he's got to make this shit really, really worth it if he's gonna do it. I got to imagine, right? Like, I mean, thousands of dollars. Listen, I'm not gonna say like I think is it's it, cool, but I, I get it. it. I guess I'm I'm not seeing that price. Like I'm on StubHub right now, and they're all like two two hundred and fifty out. So <laughs> like. Look, it's like two hundred and fifty dollars. So for for okay. Barclays, that's that's what I was gonna ask too, right? Like, I don't. Is it them that are? Se- uh, is it him that's setting the price, or is this just like third party? Like, yeah, right, this right, is right, like right. Seat Geek or something. That's not Bruce's fault. Yeah, like I don't know what the controversy is. I don't know if like his promotion, his you know management company was like, this is what we're setting the price at. People okay, well, yeah, like pit, like the pit, like front General row, admission? yeah. Front row is is a thousand dollars, but like that's, you know, that's for Barclays. Or, like for uh, yeah, Barclays. Like yeah, the front row is is mega expensive. Some, like, someone in chat says the the Garden Show is only five hundred dollars on Ticketmaster. Fine, I don't get I, it. I, it's that's kind of no. I mean, that's here's the thing that's expensive, but it's like, dude, I don't know. It's fucking Bruce. He's like one of the biggest. Yeah, like in the world. Yeah, <laughs> like I don't. Um, yeah, I was. I, yeah, I want to know like where these thousand dollar tickets are coming from. Yeah. Well, the thousand dollar tickets are like if you want front row. Sure. But that yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. should be a thousand dollars for Bruce yes. Springsteen. Yeah. Yeah. But like, well, I will say you want, for Bruce, if you front want row, top... probably sucks. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Stage has got to be like like all the way up here, right? Like you're in a fucking arena, that stage has got to be so tall. Front row probably sucks. Well, uh, okay, so the the pit itself, like pit itself, eight hundred, nine hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. But the like literal front row of seating, where you can like see across like out of the pit to the stage, that's what was uh, like, you know, twelve hundred. But I don't know. That seems like I feel like you can say that Bruce is on par with like a Paul McCartney and that's what Paul McCartney would also charge. Totally. So he's like tones. Yeah. I think he's also yeah. I think the the I think it's like the uh it's a bit of like the shock of like people don't associate they pe- people say like oh Bruce is like a he's like a hometown guy. Like he's not going to fuck people over like that. Like I feel like he has that uh sort of uh image I think a little bit maybe. Maybe that's what I mean, he might, but I mean that's kind of a bullshit yeah, no, I'm uh, I'm not saying like that's, that. I'm not saying that means he can't charge what he can get away with. But like maybe I'm just trying to understand where this like fake outrage is coming from, right? Sure. I don't know. I think uh, if you want to see a Bruce, lot. you got to just fucking pay, man. That's uh, and don't go just, to all the shows. Go to one, maybe. <laughs> go to one or like I don't know, like you don't got to be a fucking front row guy. Like just go and buy a like a second balcony like drop five hundred dollars per ticket 
Go to the midsection. You'll have a fucking totally fine time. If you're going to Barclays of the Garden or whatever, you get to eat penne. It's fine. It's true. You can have a nice time. It's true. Are you guys like huge Bruce fans? Or are you like a huge Bruce guy? Yeah. Jeremy? Huge. I, I like him fine. I like uh, uh, I like Born to Run. Yeah. Um, I think beyond that, I, he's hit or miss for me. Yeah. And Dan, do you know who he yeah, is? Yeah, I like Nebraska a lot. Born to Run. Mm-hmm. Uh, the River's got some great stuff on it. So, yeah, like a River lot of the older stuff. Yeah, yeah. Darkness on the Edge of Town, front yes. to back, is like yes. is a masterpiece. I think that that's like a perfect record. Jeremy, if you've never checked that out, give that a give that a whirl. Yeah, I mean, I have, dark I'll, I'll give it another one. It's probably been a long enough time. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. The, the thing about Bruce and being from New Jersey is this sort of thing where everyone you meet not from New Jersey is just like, well, you're obviously a big Bruce guy, and it's just like, yeah, I like him fine. Like, you know, um, I, it's not. You should count your fucking blessings, man, because you know what it is from Long Island? It's Billy Joel. That's what we got. <laughs> and that's what people ask us about all the damn time. You got a way cooler one. <laughs> I, yes, I mean, I... I both? I, I, I kind of like Billy Joel. I like Billy Joel. You know? I love Billy Joel, of course I almost I do, like him more than Bruce. Yeah, I get yeah. it. I get it. He's, he's, he's got problems, for sure. But uh, I'm from know. Kansas City, so it's like Ed Asner is about the biggest <laughs> <early>. <laughs> So, so listen, yeah, Fran's rusher. I'm from Queens. Like, I don't like that which counts, rocks. Man. I love, I love Fran. Who doesn't? Love Fran. I, I, I say embrace your hometown, uh, like Hero. thing. Be it, yeah. be a, be a fucking townie. Love Bruce. Enjoy a Billy Joel. Like, like a, what, like a Billy Joel is a silly guy, but what are we going to act like the stranger doesn't honk front to back also? <laughs> no, dude, I, <laughs> I, I really do enjoy Billy Joel. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I had a, a little whisper in my ear. Uh, apparently, we cannot end things on Bruce Springsteen. We have to play one more voicemail. Obviously, it's a special voicemail with our album or friends here. Uh, let's listen to Extra Detail down MP3. I think this is the one I want. Okay, good. Ooh, I just wanted to provide some extra detail about uh, the sort of apocryphal story of Willem Dafoe's penis. Supposedly, one of the big sort of flashpoints where everyone figured out that he had just was really slinging sausage was I, on the movie Antichrist. Uh, mm, supposedly, yes. test audiences did not believe that his penis on screen was a real penis. And so they used a double with a smaller penis to fill in so it would seem more realistic to audiences. So try that what? fucking one on for size. Wow, Willem Dafoe had to have a stunt dick because it was too big for audiences. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Try that on for size, literally. Yeah, wow. yeah. I don't know. Sounds painful. Speaking of oh Willem Dafoe, he is in Aquaman, and they do uh, computer animate special hair onto him. <laughs> oh, they're yeah. gonna say here's the CGI dick to make it smaller. <laughs> <laughs> it do be like that sometimes. Oh my gosh. Well, what is thank you. Yeah, what is yeah, that? Who's, who's squeaking? Well, that is uh, that is my son on the other side of the door. <laughs> uh, All right, I just well, that's, figured out that I'm home. <laughs> that is, <laughs> and that's the <laughs> alarm. As we, as always, on uh, every episode on the voicemail dump truck, whenever the squeaking starts, that's when we have to call it a show. Uh, Jeremy, aka Knuckles Guarcinio, thank you so very much for joining us. Uh, tell everyone about Albumer and uh, what we can expect sooner. Well, well, uh, folks, if you're not watching El Bummer, I get it. But also, <laughs> come on! <laughs> I know it's. A fi- I know we're. I, I, like uh, it's a tough sell. I get it. It's a tough sell because we're a music show it's and a been video a game. Year, you have to accept us at some point. <laughs> we are That's here. Right. Well, here I, I will say we are. Uh, like uh, we are finishing out. August. Uh, after next week, next week uh, we have a an Aero, a late stage Aerosmith album episode. But after that, we are going to be covering Trent Reznor's Quake soundtrack. And after that, we're going to be covering Tony Hawk's American Wasteland, the Tony Hawk uh, game where he made a soundtrack where he got a bunch of modern punk bands to cover old punk bands. Huh. And it was in 2005, so. Punk was a lot different around then. <laughs> and then <laughs> the, fi- the final entry of that series, we are going to be covering Sonic Adventure 2 because that is a <laughs> video game soundtrack that has lyrics, full songs, 
Uh, I have not heard it, but it sounds unhinged. My <laughs> wife knows all the lyrics to many of those songs. What? She will, like, randomly sing the Knuckles rap or the running Knuckles around rap. at the speed of sound and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's like a pumpkin zone thing, and there's like a Knuckles rap. Uh, yeah, she wow. knows all it, the lyrics. We are. It's it's gonna be fucking awesome. So we are. Yeah, we're doing a series of like curated video game albums uh i and they're all just so fucking different <laughs> um i gotta we're gonna we're gonna find a guest who loves trent reznor and quake i don't know well, we anyone gotta, who's played quake but we'll figure it out we got we should maybe we should tell lucy to get on that she's a huge nine inch nails oh uh, yeah freak. yeah that'd be good man. oh yeah let's yeah. do it yeah. yeah, I hear the really? Giant Bomb audience loves when Giant Bomb people are on our show. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we're doing, uh, basically, we're going to be, the, the changes to Al Bomber are just going to be, like, we are going to, we're going to start doing things as a, as a series. So we got a series of video game soundtrack episodes, and then after that, we're going to do all the Metallica albums that we haven't already covered on the show. We're going to finish off Metallica narrative. The Metallica them. arc. I love Metallica it. arc. It comes Very to good. a close. Finally. End of the trilogy. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you both uh, again. Uh, please come back very soon. Dan Reichert. Hi, yes. It's been fine. Um, <laughs> Oh, it's, it's, been, yeah. it's just yeah, been fine. Get his ass. It's fine. Yeah. Jan Ochoa, thank you very much for producing as always. Ladies and gentlemen, 707 Exit Flu is our phone number. Please give us a call. Leave us a voicemail. And uh, hopefully we will choose yours next week. Thank you once again, everybody. We'll see you next time. They still see us.